Remember when I rightfully called Studio Passione a bunch of degenerate creeps for their anime adaptation of Miyaruko-chan? Well, recently I saw this pile of shit was airing. It's an isekai anime about a guy who goes around murdering people in their sleep to buy himself a sex slave. And can you guess which studio produces this anime? Studio Passione, of course, of course it's Studio Passione. It feels so good to be right. Anyway, anime truly is a special medium. While young adult fiction novels, for example, are trying to convince you that toxic relationships are good, anime is like, hey, uh, slavery is actually kinda nice, and uh, kids, well, they're kinda hot. With the barrier of entry being historically low, anime has truly become a breeding ground for capitalist innovation. And by innovation, I mean endless pandering to the animalistic impulses of 14-year-old boys. Yes, sure you can produce media with some sort of social commentary or progressive moral messaging. Or you can just make an incel wish fulfillment fantasy about a highly fuckable 15-year-old schoolgirl. We both know which one is easier to make money off of. So what about slavery? Slavery is extremely prevalent in the isekai genre of weeb media. And what's concerning is that it's almost never challenged by the protagonist, who usually comes from the modern civilized world. In fact, slavery is more often beneficial to the isekai protagonist as a reliable way to obtain a party member or a involuntary romantic interest, since apparently nobody would stick around them of their own volition, which plays into the audience's fear of rejection. Let's take a popular anime as an example of this, Rise of the Shield Hero, which is a power fantasy slash revenge story with a major incel appeal. The main character is betrayed and, more importantly, is cucked by a princess, no less, uh, just for fun, basically. So naturally he decides he cannot trust anyone ever again, and therefore he has no other choice but to become a slave owner. In fact, Naofumi, the protagonist, travels with not one, but two girls he bought as property. And the problem of slavery is only ever brought up by the antagonists, be it by the other heroes, who are portrayed as gullible, idealistic and stupid, or by the evil nobles, who made it legal in the first place. But it's never done as an actual challenge to the evil, unjust system, only as a way to attack the protagonist, which makes the audience sympathize with the slave-owning MC. To justify his actions further, the anime relies heavily on the notion of a kind slave-owner, which is the exact same argument many North American reactionaries use to whitewash the history of their slave-owning founding fathers. In actuality, though, you cannot be a kind or good person and own slaves at the same time. And if you think you can, congratulations, your moral compass is fucked. On the topic of fucked up moral compasses, let's talk about child molestation. As a responsible progressive, I am all for the adequate destigmatization of pedophilia to make sure that non-offending pedophiles can safely seek the treatment and support that they need. But I sure as fuck will never find the actual child predation and its normalization in media to be anywhere near acceptable. And this is where many weebs seem to disagree with me. Japanese pop culture and anime in particular has been fetishizing youth and straight up sexualizing kids for decades. A good example of that would be a wildly popular modern media franchise, Mushoku Tensei. Mushoku Tensei is another isekai story, with a high-budget anime adaptation. Some even call it the grandfather of isekai. The rough premise is this. A 34-year-old reclusive ugly bastard who jerks off to children, even during his parents' funeral, is reincarnated into a fantasy world where he grows up in a wealthy family that provides him with everything, and where he becomes stupidly powerful thanks to his inborn magical talent and a bunch of plot contrivances. As a 40 plus year old in a child's body, the protagonist, Rudeus, never passes an opportunity to be a creep to women 
and goes to great extent in grooming slash child molestation. The end game of the story is him having three wives, two of whom he met when they were five and nine years old respectively, and the other one was his age, but with a permanent childlike appearance. Since she's actually a hundred-year-old dragon, as they say, childlike Roxy can be properly sexualized while technically not crossing into the child-born territory. And as such, the audience gets to watch her masturbate right in the second episode of the anime. Wonderful stuff. There's a lot of other fucked up shit in Mushoku Tensei, like a woman being pressured into marrying her rapist, or the protagonist molesting a sleeping child, who is also his student. There's simply too much, so I might just showcase it in a separate video, I guess. But the biggest issue with it is that it's almost never shown in a negative light, and is instead either played for laughs to some cheerful music, or just presented as something normal. And it doesn't help that in Mushoku Tensei's carefully crafted world, almost all women are simply two-dimensional trophies being competed for by the men, almost all of whom are sexual predators. Anyway, I can shit on Mushoku Tensei all day long, but you get the point. Today's anime is more of a detriment to society than a boon. It teaches young, impressionable minds all the wrong lessons and reinforces the pre-existing beliefs of those viewers who have already fallen down the reactionary pipelines. Anime needs to change or stay rightfully stigmatized forever and the responsibility to do the changing lies on those anime enjoyers who recognize these problems. Also, let's be real, anime writing fucking sucks. See ya.